Okay guys, this will be another short little video. Um, and just so that you know, this is what progress looks like. Um, okay, so um, I found this little anvil on Facebook Marketplace. It's the same size as one that I sold right in the beginning that I really regret. Um, so I bought this because it's basically going to be the replacement of the little one that I sold. Anyway, it's a little 45 pound 19 kg anvil. Um, what's really special about it is that it, the weight stamp is marked in pounds uh, and not hundred weights. So um, I'm very excited to see what the manufacturer is, try and learn a little bit more about it. And I think it'll go great in my little collection. I am very, very happy with this purchase. Um, this is very, very cute. Um, that's how big it is. How cute is that? It's like as wide as that big colonial's, uh, it's, it stands probably about as high as that big colonial's face. How cute, eh? Anyways, so that's what I, that really caught my eye when I saw it advertised, is that it's ma marked in pounds, so 43 pounds. Um, unfortunately, there are no maker's marks that I can see um i can see something there but i'll have to see what it looks like after the dip um there is a d stamp there and yeah maybe a date stamp i don't know we'll see we'll see what the dip reveals um there is quite a lot of like gunk and stuff on there's also some markings up here i can definitely see some markings there so anyway we'll see what happens um We'll see what the dip does. But I mean, look at the face of this thing, hey? Like, how incredible is that? You can still see like the original where they actually drifted the the hardy hole. Like the face is really, really, really undamaged. Um, amazing, you know? A little bit of cutting around around the horn. The heel is almost undamaged. So it's, it's really, really nice. Originally, really original. Oh, imagine. How cool it would be if that is a date stamp. Imagine how cool that will be. I'm very excited. At the moment, we've got the big um, colonial mouse hole in the, in the dip. But this is next. I'm so excited. I'm not going to do anything to this. This is just going to be a cleanup. This is going to go with my other anvil collection, my small anvil collection. So for those of you who don't know what my little anvil collection is looking like, that is it over there. I don't know why I really, really love little anvils, especially little forged anvils um it's amazing that i mean those are big anvils and the amount of force that went into making those is incredible but the fact that they used the same technology to make small little anvils is incredible um you can't really see it you could see it in the better in the other video from when it was on my workbench but the hammer marks oh man i don't know there's something about a little forged anvil that really just um i can't resist so anyways um, I thought I'll show you. So there's my, that was my f second little anvil. My first little anvil was obviously that one over there, but uh, the one that I sold that I regret. So this is uh, the one videos that I've got, which is a military pattern. Um, it's also marked in pounds, which is very rare. Um, I don't know who made it. Um, the stamping on it is buck. What? Buck and Hickman, I think. There it is over there. Um, which is just a, um, that was like a hardware retail store. So I actually don't know who the maker of it is. Um, then that was my other little one, which is also a military pattern. Um, also don't know who made it, but it's got a nice date stamp, um, 1898. And uh, I really loved the fact that there was a double stamping on the weight stamp. Um, and then that is on the other side. So yeah, no clue on who made that. And then um, this is a little PFP, which is very, very special. Um, first German anvil I've ever owned. So that was really, really cool. As far as I know, it's German. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But anyway, no stampings on your other I had to just go off of the design of the anvil, the location of the hardy hole, the lack of a pritchel hole, the feet, everything like that. Anyway, so that's also a little 
um, I think it's also about 56 pounds or so like that. Very, very small. Um, and then obviously my Trenton, um, that I paid way too much for. That was the one that got so badly damaged in the electrolysis dip. Um, but it's also very nice, great stampings, 50 pounds. Um, nice serial number, um, nothing on this side. Anyways, um, and then yeah, now this new one over here. So um, yeah, we'll clean this one up as well. I will most likely just clean up the face um, because it's so close. It's so close to perfect. I think it'll look so nice with a, like with the Trenton, you know, so aged from the face down, but on the face, really nice, smooth. Um, I think I just love that look. So I'm probably going to do that. I'm not going to touch the horn though. Um, although I might, I might do what I did on that other little one where I just clean up the horn like that, cutting table and face. We'll see. We'll see what I do here, but I really want, um, yeah, I want this to basically be like the Trenton, you know, that is my ideal world right there. Okay. And then, yeah, this is just a Chinese paperweight. It got thrown in with some stuff. It's cast iron, really nothing special. Broken off heel, obviously, because it's cast iron. So anyways, but that's my little anvil collection. And um, I'm very happy with it. Um, I think they are so cute and they have so much character. Um, as you can see on the big anvils, um, I've started marking off bevels. I need to remove the feet. So I have borrowed a cutting torch from my friend. Um, so I have the equipment now in order to remove all these chunks of steel. We're gonna be removing the feet completely, both of them. Then we're gonna bevel this down. I have to come in here because that's too close to the weight stamp and I really don't wanna damage that. So I don't know how quite yet I'm gonna cut around that and then bevel all the way down again, obviously inside. Um, so these, I'm not gonna be doing any edges on this one. This one I will do edges on. But um, for those of you who are new here, I'm gonna be marrying these two anvils together to make one massive um, plus minus thousand pound anvil. Um, yeah, because that one is, let's see what the weight stamps are, two zero, uh, five zero one six. And then this one over here is four zero twenty two. So that's also, I think, close on 500 pounds. So. That's the plan there. Um, yeah, really excited to do that. Um, it's just a matter of when and how it fits into everything else I've got going on. Okay, so what I'm finding quite interesting on this is that the, the hardy hole, let me see if I can show you guys here. I've got this thing pulled out. This is the same size chain. This is the smallest chain I have. But the hardy hole is so small that I can't get the links in there. You know, normally I put the, the chain through here, loop it over. So what I've had to do, again, just quickly get a better grip over here. Nice situation. Um, so what I've had to do is I've just made a little bit of a slip knot. Um, I've got this D-shackle holding the two ends of my chain together. So. I've literally just made a little slip knot and um, yeah, the plan is that I'm going to hang the anvil like this in the dip. I'm actually not going to, I'm going to have it hanging on this plank, um, hanging sort of suspended in the water. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, doing it a little bit differently this time and then obviously I'll just put my electrodes in. Okay, so we've got that in the water now, or in the dip. A lot of you guys ask uh, questions about the electrolysis dip. Okay, so let me just explain this. You'll see obviously my inverter here. Um, I have explained this in other videos, but I'm gonna just explain it again in this video. I use the inverter because it can handle the current. Um, I used to use a battery charger, I burnt the battery charger out. So all I do is I use the inverter, I dial it, down to its lowest amperage possible. The negative connects on to your, whatever you're wanting to clean and your positives attach to your electrodes. Um, 
a while ago, I read an article about stainless steel, so I made stainless steel electrodes. Oh, there you go. As you can see, it's not really the answer. That's what's left of my electrodes. So um, look, they're still fine, they're gonna work. Um, this one over here actually fatigued on the, on the wire. So I will not need that one um, because it's a small anvil. But um, yeah, so your positive attaches to your electrodes, your negative to your workpiece, and uh, yeah, you switch it on and that's the way it works. The, the solution is made up of soda ash, soda ash. You can get soda ash at any hardware shop, supermarket, it's a laundry detergent and you'd use one tablespoon of soda ash per gallon of water. That's the ratio. Sorry about the compressor in the background, guys. Okay, so I've got my light over here just to try and shed a bit of light on the situation. There's a little bit of a dark corner in here, but you can see there, with the anvil we've got that suspended ground or negative is attached to the workpiece and then i've got my electrodes just hanging suspended as well um, i've got this one nice and close please make sure the electrodes don't touch otherwise it will short out obviously it is just electricity after all um, so that's sort of the sort of the thing and then obviously i've got my positives all running over here I just use it like that, and then my electrode, uh, my negative is attached to there. So um, yeah, let's just switch this on. Obviously my amperage is way up from welding, so please turn it down to minimum. And then there it goes. And that is how easy it is. Not very difficult at all. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't start bubbling, then you know you've got a loose connection somewhere on your negative. Um, but there you go, it's working. So we'll run that now for like two days, get all the rust off of there. Obviously we'll get all that top sludge stuff on here, but that's not a problem. And um, that is as easy as electrolysis is. I made this bath for it. Everyone says, oh, you can't use a steel bath. Well, I do. Um, I made this steel bath so that I can dip my anvils and stuff. Um, and um, what I did is I took it and I had it bin lined. You know the stuff that you put in your pickup bin? It's like that polyurethane spray rubber stuff. I had the whole inside of mine sprayed with that. So it's non-conductive. But um, yeah, that's what I did and it works perfectly. There you go. Okay, so it's been in for two days. I've just switched it off. Um, that's what it looks like. And... Um, you can just see here if you can see very difficult to see but I mean if you if I just pull this out a little bit there you go you can see there's no more rust on there it's like that black color mm -hmm. which is great because that means that it's sort of, the process is finished um, yeah so we'll pull it out now put it on the table and wire brush it and then hopefully it will reveal some nice stampings and stuff Okay, so there it is. Nice clear weight stamp. But unfortunately, no other stamps. I thought there might be maker's marks up here in a very light date stamp, but it was just a chisel mark. So all we have to go on is that D and then the weight stamp. So it's going to be very hard to find a maker or a yoga manufacturer on this. But it's nevertheless a very nice little anvil. Face is really good. I'm not going to do anything to this. Um, yeah, uh, I really like it. it. Looks like it was used as like a jeweler's anvil just by those tiny little um, center punch marks. Um, so yeah, very, very nice little anvil. I like it a lot. So I will decal the 43 pounds and letter D. And then I will get it in linseed oil.
And that is it. The little one is done. I'm not going to be touching it now for about two weeks while um, that linseed oil dries. But it turned out really, really nice. Um, I'm very, very happy with this little anvil. I'll try and get more information on it, but I can't guarantee anything. Um, but yeah, um, we'll see you guys in the next video. The next one coming out will be that colonial mouse hole. Um, yeah, I've got the face plates and everything prepped over there. Um, so yeah, that one will be coming out next. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Um, like, subscribe, do what you need to do. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon.